Hey guys, and welcome back to a Gamer Zine. I'm Matt, and this is the park. So we just left off, and some rocks had fallen over. I'd just gone through the swan ride with Hansel and Gretel, and I'm still not completely sure if that's... That must be the actual, like, Brothers Grimm version of the story, if... I think it is Brothers Grimm. Hey, Ferris wheel. So, I mean... I... And uh, my assumption is that that's the full story, because I don't remember... The only thing I really don't remember is hearing them actually eat the witch. That I don't remember, but I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not very knowledgeable in that area, so I'm not... He hasn't even responded to me. So, you know, I'm not going to try and prove that. Um... But what is this? Is that a bird? Thing used to make the blood run in my head. Make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. snapped. Oh. Those poor kids. Uh, we were waiting for you to turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people taking photographs. Uh, Lawrence wanted to go over him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice, and, the f and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion. But as more and more of the ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of the block of ice. But the more you looked, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the purport proportions something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster like you were prey and the thing in the ice was a hunter but then these teenagers walked up to one of them and made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit and then well he went berserk for a few moments it was chaos everybody was running away from the guy who had who had one of the teenagers on the ground and he was stab stab stabbing with the ice pick and the blood was spraying the people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could and the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was the eyeball of one of the poor kids landed on the ice sculpture making the horrible creature look more or less alive oh wow that's insane how could this park stay open? I heard a response. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. I like how she actually sounds concerned and she's actually like kinda scared of it. Decrease speed. Decrease speed. I can't get on while it's moving. Oh. Decrease speed. Decrease speed. Decrease speed. Keep going. There we go. The Octotron. We. Why am I writing this? Shouldn't I be looking for my child? What? 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 No, no, no. Too fast. Too, too fast. Too fast. No, stop. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not even moving. Oh, no, maybe I still am. Sweet Jesus! It's still- Oh my god, it's moving, no! Oh god... Wait, what? Where did it go? Oh my god, it was fucking huge! Where did it go? <laughs> oh, shit. Tina thing from uh, Bob's Burgers. 
Wait, is there someone in the booth? Increase speed. Increase speed. Increase speed. See how much I can increase the speed. Go, go, go! As fast as you can! I think that's as fast as it goes. Whatever, Mama, you, you can... What is this? She looks so, like, terrified or, like, stoned or something. Alright, Ferris wheel or that way? I'm gonna go to the Ferris wheel. I wanna go over the Ferris wheel. Oh, there he is. I see him. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete, I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money. But no matter how much money talks, it can't conjure up missing plans from the air. I've tried contacting the organization who said these plans and they are stone stonewalling me. Every contact that I have, every meeting place that I have matched that I've wa that I had watched are swept bare. I am I have a sinking feeling that I am being swindled. We've gone ahead with what we could find in the plans regardless. We have harvesting machine we have the harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. It'll probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day day we open the park. They will they will be the rides after all. How do I Maybe I can go around. I must be able to go around from this way. Wait for mommy. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled red bawling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell into pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Wow. Oh, sweet Jesus. I thought working in the park for summer would be a lot of fun, but in the end of but the end of the season here really drags. There aren't many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their time standing around gossiping, and most of the gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I am starting to call him Chad. I And I went to school with the guy. It's... Uh, it's that goddamn suit. It's the beginning. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush, as Chad, the chipmunk. Child friendly mascot as Atlantic Island Park. Uh, look up your daughters. Look up your daughters and all that. Lock up your daughters and all that. Uh, but the more he wears the suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was little things like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, but then I saw him at Susie's Diner still wearing it. It wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complimented discreet, complained discreetly, discreetly to the park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him picking, uh, picking up in a gutter outside the school. Puking up in a gutter outside the... 
Sequoil Station? Because he sure as hell can carve a man ice mean ice sculpture, those shapes he makes in the ice though. They they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he was just he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of that suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, s sizing me up. I I f I fucking me. Whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually I called my supervisor and when he came by Chad when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything into writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that jam damn chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. Oh, sweet Jesus, motherfucker! Not cool. Oh, that thing's... That thing's terrifying. How is this like a child thing? Hello? I can't hear it. Come to Mommy Catwoman. Come back. Catch me, Mommy. That's what I heard. Oh, fuck. That scared the shit out of me. Oh, jeez. So what ride is this? Crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Bumpers cars. Callum. Looks like I'm gonna have to go this way. Well, it doesn't look like I can actually... Oh, nope, I can get into the bumper cars. Oh, God, that woman. I wonder if that was the woman from the note. Can I, like, drive him? No, it doesn't look like it. Whew. Why is that one on? Don't hide from me, Callum. Of course. I think that this, the distortion, whenever I yell Callum, I think is kind of a note to say, hey, there's something here for you to read. Just so you guys know. Um, I didn't know if you guys had kind of got that or not. Oh, another one. Let's see. Francis Duf. Ron, something like that. 25th of October, 1976. La, la, bleu, la, bleu, la bleu. Working on the crane. Uh, Richard Supervisors, Richard Stapleton. Witnesses, Lawrence Creed, Michael Edgeworth. Creed, that's a cool last name. Uh, brief description of accident or incident. It's a photocopy. Uh, during the transport of the bumper car into the arena... Oh, excuse me. Uh, one of the straps attaching to the load attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars into Francis, who was standing directly who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars, described injuries and cause. Francis was killed. Uh, did the injury employee see a doctor? Yes. If yes, did the employees did the did you file employer's position of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Supervisor's comments. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. What could have done what could have been done to prevent this accident slash incident? Double checking the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screening for all drivers. Have this unsafe conditions been corrected? No. Uh, additional comment. The local laborers are very superstitious, and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park exercising 
bad spirits. Sweet Jesus. Whoa. Is that a bumper car? Oh, it's a little... Guess it revealed the stairs to me. Stay where you are. Wait, what? Crying child? It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car. Watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help help is agony. I'd rather, I'd rather die. die. I wanted to scream. scream. I'd rather, I'd you, rather pulled you pulled your gun, your gun and, and shot, shot me. me. But instead, instead my mouth said, said yes, yes, Sheriff. Wow. I can't tell if she, like, hates the child, or... Stay where you Stay are! That's two. Oh, God, I can't. I can barely read that. Continuing delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they are are locals, and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what Old Man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those tales. Every time a bolt comes loose of a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Um... Of course, that's why I choose to cite over all the other potentials. Solomon Isle is a nexus for dark energies, and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here, it makes my skin crawl. I called for a few favors back in Brooklyn, got someone to uh, at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about the local history. Turns out that they do, and it turns out that the old man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. Huh. So it kind of sounds like she she's obviously a single mom, you know, and she, she it sounds like maybe she was abandoned by the guy that possibly got her pregnant. And so, it's kind of like he, what, I like, I'm trying to explain it, like he, he abandoned her once he got her pregnant, and so she's had to raise him up on her own, and so if she does something wrong, she's labeled as failure or things like that, all that kind of stuff, um, and so, you know, she's a single mom, so of course society doesn't approve of her. Um, but it almost sounds like she may not even like the child itself. Or may maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, it sounds like she isn't exactly fond of Callum, though. What, there's no door? That's not safe. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just thinking too much about it, but to me, it just, it kind of sounds like she's really almost kind of fed up with the fact that she's a parent. Sorry. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. 
He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Calum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Oh no. Wow, I'm so fucking wrong. And I happen to be on the Ferris wheel. Oh god, something's gonna be at the bottom. Oh Jesus. Here it comes, man, here it comes! Oh, what was that? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Where are you, Callum? I hear a baby scream. Oh, she sounds so fucking scared, and so do I. Alright, well, this looks like a good place to end episode two. I hope you guys are liking it. I'm really interested in the story. It's a really good story so far. Um, I'm going to try and get try and get the rest of these episodes pumped out for you guys, because I'm just I'm too interested not to keep going. Uh, I hope you guys are liking it just as much as I am, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good